my response might sound a little um, tough, but I, I, I just, I'd kill him, I'd bury him. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, you know, tolerance for that and the, the kind of culture that the Laker organization stood for winning championships is not tolerated. You're gonna show up to play and you're gonna lollygag through this scrimmage, through this drill. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to let you know I beat you. And I'm gonna want you to reconsider your professional life choice. <laughs> you know, and, and, and for the most part, you know, people will say, okay, that doesn't make a great teammate. Well, I'm not here to be a great teammate. I'm here to help you win championships. So there's a difference. Um, and, you know, fortunately for us and for me, you know, we had an organization that, you know, um, it was championships or nothing. And they were really good about identifying that and bringing players in here that had that competitive streak and, you know, getting rid of the ones that did not. If I got to fight to get you in the gym, that's a problem. That's a problem. You want players that are gym rats, players that want to be in the gym, that want to work. And then from there, you build on top of that. But if you're lazy, man, I don't want to talk to you. I want to deal with you. You don't make me feel dumber. You know, <laughs> you know, you're going to lower my level. I don't think so. You can go over there. <laughs> There's plenty of teams in here where you'll fit right in. <laughs> but your first three seasons, then the one game, it's the last game of the season you play Utah. Yeah. The one where you shoot three air balls at the end. Five. It's like five. And then you it's hit crazy. one and his them doesn't go in, right? Mm -hmm. Moses, not Malone, one of the Malones came and spoke to you. I don't know who it was from the Jazz. Malone, he was, yeah. He was saying something. You yeah. were not even paying attention. Shaq was whispering something in your ear. What did Shaq say to you in that moment? I don't even know. You don't remember? No, I wasn't paying attention. Got you know, like, like it, it was, you know, like for me, it, it's maybe it's a little like asshole of me or whatever, but whatever. Um, he was like, he was trying to whisper encouraging things. I was like, I'm fine. Okay, I shot five air balls on national TV in front of millions of people that cost us the series, and I'm 18, I'm fine, dude. How do you get their ment <laughs> How does somebody get there mentally with that public humiliation to some people, hurts them, and they don't come back? Well, you know, it's, you got to look at the reality of the situation. You know, like for me, it's not, you know, you, you kind of got to get over yourself. Like, it's not about you, man. Like, okay, you feel embarrassed. You're not that important. Like, <laughs> get over yourself. Yeah, that's where you go. Get over yourself, right? Like, you're worried about how people may perceive you, and, like, you're walking around, and it's embarrassing because you shot five air balls. Get over yourself, right? And then after that, it's okay, well, why did those air balls happen? Got it. High school, year before, we played 35 games, max, right? Week in between, spaced mm -hmm. out plenty of time to rest. In the NBA, it's back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I didn't have the legs. So you look at the shot, every shot was online. Every shot was online, but every shot was short. Right? I got to get stronger. Uh, I got to train differently. The weight training program that I'm doing, I got to tailor it for an 82-game season mm -hmm. so that when the playoffs come around, my legs are stronger and that ball gets there. So I look at it with rationale. And say, okay, well, the reason why I shot air balls is because my legs aren't there. I go, well, next year they'll be there. That was it. Done. Done. But it's, it's simple. Like, if you do the math on this, right? Like, if, you, if you're thinking about how often kids are playing, mm -hmm. right? And I tell this to my, to my daughter and my daughter's team as well that I coach. So it's a simple thing of math. If you want to be a great player, if you play every single day, two, three hours, every single day, over the course of a year, how much better are you getting? Most kids will play maybe, you know, an hour and a half, two days a week. Right. Put the math on that. It's not, it's, not going, it's not going to get it done. <laughs> it's not going to get it done. Right? So if you're obsessive, obsessive, obsessively training two, three hours every single day over a year, over two years. I probably could have made the announcement as early as last season. I said, you know, if, if, if unless something changes, next season is going to be my last season. And then finally I realized, I said, Wait, well, you can't make this decision based off of something changing. This is something that's internal. Do you want to do this or not? And if the answer is no, then that passion is no longer there the way it used to be. So just let it go. So there's nothing that could change your mind at this point. There's Zero. no there's no streak of success or no Zero. When we hear words like one word descriptions of you, I would say competitor. Who's on your short list of best competitors you've faced? Um 
Michael Jordan, Allen Iverson are the two that come to mind immediately uh, because they were just, they were relentless. Now Michael, his relentlessness was amazing. And Scotty's as well, both ends of the floor. And then, you know, my generation, AI was much the same. I mean, from opening tip to the end, I mean, this guy was just going and going and going. And he'd always put you in jeopardy. So those two guys are the most competitive I faced. Who came the closest to being the Kobe stopper? Uh, the Kobe stopper. Well, <laughs> the, 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 the player I always had the most trouble with individually was always Tony Allen. Always. Um, you know, Bruce Bowen was a great defender. See, that was the name that was on my tongue, and yeah. but Tony Allen... No, Bruce was a great defensive player. Uh, Rajah Bell was a great defensive player. Uh, Even though he was just that kid? Who is that kid? Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't know at the time. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I found out, but I didn't, I didn't really know. Now, if you were going to write letters to the three most influential people in your life, who would they be to? What would they say? Well, from a basketball perspective, um, I would say I, I'd, I'd write one to Michael, Bill Russell, and Jerry West. Saying what? Uh, saying thank you uh, for your mentorship. Uh, thank you for always being there for me when I reach out and call. If you were having a conversation, you at 37, and I'm Kobe at 18, what would you tell the young well, Kobe? I, I would say focus on, on human nature. Uh, you have to balance out understanding human nature with uh, the obsession to understand exact tactics of basketball. And as I've gotten older, I understood you can, be, you can execute till the cows come home, but if you don't understand human nature, if you don't understand how to relate to others, if you don't understand what makes them tick, you're never gonna win a championship. For those five championships, are you able to rank them? Are you able to say this one was more significant to me, or this one meant more, or this one was more special? How do you, how do you rank them? I, I think the standard answer should be no. I, they're I just like kids. They're all, they're all special in their yes, own way. But that's just not true. <laughs> uh -huh. the ball, the, when we beat Boston in, in 2010, that for me, that's number one with a bullet because going up against uh, you know, three sure Hall of Famers, um, being down in Series 3-2, having lost to them in 2008, and understanding the history and the rivalry and all that goes on there, and um, having a broken finger, and playing with a cast on. All of those things make that championship more special than the rest. When you do hang it up here at the end of the year, and you're one shy of that number six, yeah. is that gonna eat at you? No, I did everything I possibly could, and, and um, it sounds crazy to say I won five championships and come up one short. Um, but honestly, I'm okay with that. It just wasn't in the cards for me to get six or seven, you know? But I did everything possible to try to make it happen. And I can live with that any day. If you could have a do-over in your career, what would it be? If I had a do-over, I, I, I think I would take uh, more of a leadership role and, and talking to Shaq earlier before things went south. How did you mend fences with Shaquille, with Phil Jackson? Or is that still in process in ways? No, that process is, it's over with. The memories that we had were the memories that we had doing battle of us against the world. You know what I mean? Coming out on top. And when you have those moments, you, you, you form, you forge this type of bond Right, that becomes bigger than the game, becomes bigger than whatever bickering might have gone on. So I think that was the first step. And then the second step was just maturity. You know, we were both much, much older than we were at the time. And with Phil, when Phil came back to coach in 2006, um, that was our process. We started that from the first day he came here. When he came back and said, you know what, I want to come help you get these next championships. And I said, Phil, it is not my job to judge or to hold grudges. Um, I understand more than most people that people make mistakes and we move on. What do you think you're gonna miss the most? I think, I think the, uh, the, 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 the puzzle of trying to figure out how to get the best out of my teammates. The challenging of them uh, the relationship, relationships I have with them 
And then watching them develop from training camp all the way in through the postseason and then to the finals where they're the best version of themselves. You know, that, that, that process is, is the thing that I'll miss the most. You see yourself being a TV guy? Um, I, I, no. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I just... I don't have the patience to do TV. Doesn't require much. No. Charles, Kenny. Yeah. Me, Which, you and Shaq side by side, it'd be I so mean, warm and fuzzy. You, you know what's crazy to me is, you know, looking at Charles, you're looking at a transition of a player from, you know, athlete to post. I mean, he's certainly a blueprint. He found what he loves to do and what he's great at and he loves doing and there you are. If it does intrigue you, I mean, when could you start? Can we just get an agreement here today? Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah. We 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 can have we can have some type of agreement. We'll shake on it. We'll shake it. I'll, I'll do sixty percent of revenue split. All right. On the show. Excuse me. Let go of my hand. <laughs>